Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're looking at the more advanced functions of the DSMS MFD page, the Digital Stores Management System. The whole point of this page is to manage your weapons, obviously, and it replaces what would have been an old kind of panel of switches and knobs that we would have had in the A10A and it's digitized it because we've got so many options that we can change in a plane like this that you would need a panel an armament panel the whole size of this dashboard here just to do the armament so that's why it's had to be digitized so let's get on with it first things first i've currently got no stores on this plane so what i'm going to do is i'm going to arm up with some stores i'm just going to pick a random one that i see that looks quite cool to pick that one there and i'm going to arm up request rearming Okay, so our stores are all loaded, but if we go to our stores page, click on here, you can see obviously that we haven't updated it. So as well as loading the stores, we need to update the DSMS so that they represent accurately what we've got and then so that we can start editing the options of these weapons. So to update the DSMS, we're gonna press and hold stat. We're gonna click load, we're gonna click stat, we're gonna click load, and you don't have to load all, it's just what I like to do to make sure everything's loaded. Technically, you only need to go and load the DSMS there. But I'm going to go to load all. And now we wait until these guys here are populated. Okay, we're now loaded back to the stores page. And you can see that we've populated them with the correct weapons that we've got. A quick tertiary look around here. Obviously, the numbers here represent our pylons. 1, 2, 11. At the top of each weapons box, we've got the name of the weapon that's employed. And the second line here will depend on which weapon we've got. So, for instance, a GBU-38 says that we're aligned and we're ready. So bearing in mind that this has is INS GPS guided, it needs aligning. So that's all done automatically. A GBU-12 is a laser guided bomb and the information it's going to tell us here is the laser code selected for that particular weapon mark 82s here you can see that we've got three of them this is the quantity box and they are on a ter rack a agm 65 delta here is currently turned off you know you power a power a agm maverick on and off and there's two of them on that rack and they are mounted on a multi launcher 88 type rack and we've got an aim nine down here it's currently turned off we can turn an aim nine on and off as well on the main page we've got the current mode that our aircraft is in we can see the weapons are turned off uh, we're currently on the safe we've got our current ammunition loaded into our gun quantity and type combat mix if we selected weapons these weapons here we would get extra information down here in fact why don't we show that if i click on for instance a gbu 38 to select that we can see that we are in ccrp bombing mode here is the name of the profile the weapon profile here is the type of drop single and here is the fusing nose tail out of interest if we went to training so down there you can see that it becomes blue when it's in training mode and if we went to arm then it's armed and ready to use except obviously it's ground we're on the ground at the moment so it is weapons off ground safe until we take off and gear up so next we're going to look at these extra pages at the top first of all is profile so each weapon loaded has a weapon profile generated and it's the profile that we use to employ the weapon and we can adjust these profiles as we see fit. So our first weapons profile is just weapons off, and that is, well, is weapons off, it's no weapon selected. If we want to select one of these profiles, it's all been automatically generated for us, a Maverick, a Mark 82, GPU 38, GPU 12, or Mark 82 Hydrag, we can use these OSB buttons here. We can go to Maverick and cycle down as so. If we wanted to activate one of these profiles for uses, use, we could click activate profile here. It's now on and selected and you can see our profile screen is now selected the gbu 38 for use obviously we can't use it because we're safe and on the ground at the moment but that is a way that you can activate that profile that's not the only way there are two other ways which i show in the various videos we can also enable or disable one of these profiles on what we call the hud rotary so this is essentially the hud rotary we can use dms left and right to cycle around the rotary and if we wanted to disable disable one i don't know why we would but we could if we selected another one this guy here and we wanted to uh, disable it then it is now off and is no longer available in our HUD rotary for use we can also move these profiles up and down within this list so if I wanted GBU 12 at the bottom of the rotary I would highlight it as I've highlighted it here and then move it down to the bottom okay so next we can show that we can edit these profiles this is the main meat of editing the setup for the weapon so gbu12 we've got selected and we're going to go to view profile now here is the list of things that is available to change in this profile and this list of things will depend on the weapon you've got selected so we've got gbu12 selected this is probably one of the most complex weapons so we've got a big list of stuff we can change 
First of all, to say that the profile selected at the moment with the GBU-12 also shows us the pylons that are active for that weapon. So pylon 7 is what is relevant for the GBU-12. So to show that we can start changing things here, we've got the drop type, uh, the, yeah, the drop type, we can drop them in singles, we can drop them in pairs, we can drop them in uh, ripple singles, uh, ripple is at one bomb after the other while pressing and holding the weapon drop button and they release in singles, and pairs is just the same but where they drop in pairs. If you have a ripple then we can choose the ripple quantity, if we wanted to change that we could go up to the UFC, 18 for instance, and we can now drop a ripple quantity of 18 and we can change the feet that's the separation between the where the bombs drop on the ground in feet and we can change that in the same way we can change the fusing from nose tail or nose and tail we can change the bombing mode for ccip or we can change it to ccrp some bombs you will not be able to change that it depends on the bomb We've got the new function here. This allows us to rename the profile. So if I wanted to call it Caps Profile, I would type in Caps Profile here using the letter function and uh, type it in there and that would rename our profile. Then there are extra settings that we can change within this profile. So we could go in here, ping, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, so this, I've forgotten what the actual wording is here, but this is the manoeuvre that you're going to do after your bombing run. You can climb away, you can turn away, you can, uh, I've forgotten that, lateral turn or something like that. Or you can have none. You can have a desired time of full of the bomb. So if you want the bomb to fall for 10 seconds, you'd type in 10 here. You would click that. Then you would have a 10 second fall. And that would determine the hard guidance symbology that would ensure a 10 second fall with your release. You can type in a minimum altitude of drop that will give you a warning if you go and try and drop it below that altitude. We have, a, in this case, a laser time. I mean, we're not going to go through every single one of these bombs. I'm just going to give you a rough idea. Laser time, that's automatic laser time. How many seconds before the bomb impacts when the laser will turn itself on? Here is the drop um, solution, it's called. We can drop it in optimized mode or, ball or ballistic mode. To be honest, I've never actually understood the difference. It's uh, two different modes of drop. Uh, whether you want auto lasing on and off, whether you want horizontal left and right uh, offset, and that's measured in mils, and you can type it in again there. Whether you want vertical offset, I've never seen any use for the offsets. Have you ever used the offsets before, Slow? Uh, negative. For the weapon eject velocity that we can change here, to be honest, I've never understood what that does. And we've got the bomb rack delay that we can change here, and to be honest, I don't understand what that does either. Now, if we've made any changes, and why don't we make a change? Let's change the minimum altitude, 500 min so i've changed that if we ever make any changes in this profile we have to save it you must remember to do that otherwise as we all wait work wasted okay so that gives you a flavor of the kind of things we can change now if we went in to change the other profiles of the different weapons we'd get a whole lot of different options some of them would be the same but some of them will be will be kind of um, weapon specific okay so we can get back to the main page with status the main weapon status page out of interest as well when a weapon is selected then it is white box like so Next, we've got missile. This allows us to change extra options for the missile weapons that we get on the A10C, which is, if I can see them, uh, the ATM-65 Mavericks and the AIM-9 Sidewinders. EO, uh, electrical, optical, on or off. It's basically whether you want the Maverick turned on or off, you can do it from this screen here, or you can do it from the Maverick screen there. When you turn it on, a timer will start and that will be the amount of time that the Mavericks will be warmed up for. It needs at least three minutes to be turned on to align itself correctly. And I think I'm right in saying that in real life, you can only have them turn on for a certain amount of time before they run out of coolant and they will get damaged. I don't think this is modelled in DCS as far as I'm aware. And the next options are to do with well what I just spoke about. So in real life, um, the... A10 pilot has to worry about turning on his Sidewinder and his Maverick too soon and running out of coolant and burning the thing out. So we've got options that you probably never want to use in DCS, but you could do if you wanted to. Uh, you can got a main option here of uh, changing when you want to start the warm-up procedure. You could do it manually. You could do it based on a location. You could do it based on a certain time, flight time, or back to manual. And then, regards the location, we've got a lot of options here. We'll go through them in a second. First of all, we've got, uh, this is going to be the bore sight adjust. So we can adjust where the Maverick is bore sighted to. It's currently bore sighted to yeah, roughly about there, where I'm hi highlighting there. If you wanted to change that bore sight, and I don't know why you would, you've got the ability to change that, turn that off and on here. In fact, you've got it right there as well. Off, on and whatnot. 
Next, you've got options to, if we were in location uh, specific, when we were to turn the Mavericks on, then it needs, in, it needs data to know where. Where do you want that Maverick to be turned on? Here you can set a bearing. Here you can set a range. And here you can set the waypoint that that is all relevant to. So very roughly to say that's when we get to a certain point in space, regards to a waypoint, then it'll automatically turn that the Mavericks on. And here is regards the time, if we were on time function, when we wanted the Mavericks to turn themselves on. So that's the Mavericks. Then we come up here to the AIM-9s. Uh, the AIM-9, we can have it off. Uh, so here's where we can change it manually. We can have them off, or I can't change them on the ground here, but we could have them uh, to cool, which I relate personally to, like, um, turning the Mavericks on. Um, in a way, kind of li aligning them, but it's, it's actually cooling them down, But we believe, cooling the sensor down. Or we can have them select, which is where they're selected and ready to fire basically next we have the aim nine adjuster so again the aim nines are caged to bore sight standard to you know roughly about there if we, we can actually adjust where that bore sight is and here it is allowing to we can turn this off and on to adjust that bore sight and finally we have aim nine reject now we've scoured the manual and we can't find what that does the nearest thing we can think of is that when you if you want to eject uh, reject a look a lock that you currently have on a target we can press that and that will eject the, eject the lock. That's the best. If you know any better than that, please let us know. Okay, so back to this DSMS status page. Next, we've got S uh, Jet. This is Selective Jetson. Now, we're not going to go into this now because we're going to do a separate video on that. So just bear in mind that's there. And the fourth one is Inventory. Now, my understanding of Inventory is that there are certain extra options that we can set on these weapons that we can't set in from the cockpit. They would actually have to be set on the ground crew, you know, using spanners and ratchets and turning knobs and stuff on the actual missile. And so in DCS, this is simulated by the inventory option. That's our understanding of the inventory option. So it's like extra options that you wouldn't usually be able to do from the cockpit, but we can because it's DCS and we can't actually get out with our ratchets and, and spanners and stuff. So inventory. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to select, well, let's say we want to uh, play about with our GBU-38. In fact, no, let's go for a GBU-12 because we'll probably get some more fun options. I want to uh, play with our GBU-12. First thing we have to tell the system is what is it? I know that sounds a bit silly, but we do. And it is a GBU. And we have to tell it it's a GBU... Was it GBU-12? Yeah, GBU... We have yeah. to tell it it's a GBU-12. And then there is all this extra stuff we can change. So uh, we can change different types of fuses you could have in the actual bombs. So this is something the ground crew will be doing with the actual bombs. Uh, we can change the type of tail fuse we put in the bomb. Again, I don't know what any of these actually mean. It's way beyond me. But, and we can change this, you know, number here. We can change the series of bomb. Uh, you know, again, beyond me, BB, a ZB, a DB, a B. I don't know what any of this does, but, you know, the actual series of the bomb that we're carrying. In this case, with a GBU, we can change the laser code. This is where we'd want to change the laser code. If we wanted to change the laser code 1588, then ping, that's where we'd change it. Again, that would be the ground crew that would be doing that. Uh, do we want this bomb mounted directly to a pylon? Do we want it on a TER, um, what do you call it, guys, uh, uh, like rack? Um, in which case, we can have three, and we can change the quantity there and, and, and whatnot. So it's hugely dynamically changeable. And then once we've changed all these settings and we want to actually load it, a bit like saving on the profile screen, we want to load it to this pylon, then we click load here. And that will load those settings to that weapon. And you can now see we've got a GBU-12 there, but it's now a 1588. Anything you want to add to inventory, guys? The only, especially with the GBU-12, the only thing re you're really going to change on there is the laser code and possibly the tail set which is, I think, the timing of the fuse. So you can have a delay, a delayed timing. Obviously, it's a GBU, so it doesn't have a nose. Oh, the, the, the fuse. Laser moment. guided bomb. Sorry, it's a laser guided bomb, rather. So it's, it doesn't have it. Yeah, the left hand side is the nose fuse, nose F, uh, FZ. So okay. because it's a laser guided bomb, it won't have a nose fuse, I don't think. Um, and then you can see that it's got the tail fused already set. And the, uh, I think the tail set is a uh, time. So I think it's just a four second, a four millisecond delay on the, on the impact there. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I wasn't aware of any of that stuff, but wow. So, and would it, actually, like. would it actually do that fusing? Would it actually, when you drop that bomb and say you give it a twelve millisecond delay or second or whatever that is, would that actually do that to that bomb then? I believe so. I've never, I've never tried it, but I believe that um, you can. Uh, I mean, delay set is a thing in DCS. So I believe you can set set that set that up, and it will do the delayed 
uh, explosion. I might try that. Might, yeah. The only thing really I use in there is to change the laser code. Back to the main status page, and that's it. Oh, there's one more thing I want to add. Inventory, sorry, uh, GPU 12. If um, we wanted to load this to the symmetrical pylon, uh, the same settings to the symmetrical pylon, uh, so, you know, on the other side of the aircraft, symmetrical, you could click load symmetrical and it would load it over there. That's what I want to show. Right, so that is the detailed uh, review of the DSMS. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.